Unscannable 33. I see, I see a very powerful interaction there. Um, sorry, the reason I interrupted you now, I apologise for doing so, um, before was um, over this um, idea that um, all conspiracies, theories, um, seem to kind of have equal kind of credible truth claims. Um, now, um, and, and this is probably going to be quite a big discussion, which we'll probably go into in greater depth. But the definition we used of conspiracy theory in, in our report was as um, the kind of um, a, a, a kind of deliberate um, um, conspiracy, a powerful few to um, to to influence events, uh, regardless of the evidence. Now, we we actually acknowledge in our report that um, there are plenty of conspiracies that have turned out to be true. Plenty of conspiracies that turned out to be true. Um, Imagine four, over 40 years old. Sure, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, but we, we okay, it wasn't the, our job to list a, to list 70 conspiracy theories that turned out to be true. No, no, but, but you didn't admit to any recent conspiracy theories, only the ones where there have been groups, pressure groups, which had that. Eventually being recognised, but there are only four. But what, what, what's the point? What's can I? What's well, well, what, 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 conspiracy theory. Now this is going to be, I think, a, a great bone of contention between perhaps various people in this room. But we argue that the way in which conspiracy theory differs from theories of conspiracies is that they're based on something called an asymmetry of scepticism. It's the idea that, um, and we view this to be uh, the case for the 9-11 truth movement, um, it's um, any official account to do with the 9-11 truth movement is <coughs> delegitimised regardless of the evidence of it, or the, the, the evidence for it. Whereas any contesting narrative um, 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 is kind of put forward, you know, even regard, you know, even um, given you know, a contortion of evidence, you know, a ridiculous kind of suspension of disbelief um, to kind of massage the available facts into the right. So I, I know lots of people are going to disagree with me on this, but this this was the, this, this is our position on this. Um, so the idea that conspiracies exist, agree. The idea that government lies, agrees. The idea that the American government, the Israelis, the Brits, whoever, like, perpetrated the attacks on 9-11, given the evidence which we know, given all the um, critical journalism, given all the people looking into this, like, completely disagree. I think, like, so there is a difference. There is, like, conspiracy theories don't all sit on one pedestal. Some are true, and, they, and truth comes out, and we do have a strong citizen society, and we do have investigative journalists, and we do have um, oversight committees, and we do have MPs asking questions, uh, and we do have Freedom of Information Act, and it will come out, I think. I think, I think the history of the exposure of conspiracy theories show that they do become exposed. But often actually through the actions of government, as you rightly pointed out, actually, the church committee, um, you know, um, exposing uh, CIA involvement in you know, some of the deposition of Salvador Allende. Like, but does the 9-11 movement, for instance, have that same body of very credible empirical evidence for its existence? I'm afraid I don't think it does. And, and if, I, if I may follow up on that point... Um, but I, again, I'm similar to Carl, I agree with much of what you're saying. I, actually, I, I think it's the persistent covering up of, of cut-ups that governments routinely do that fuels conspiracy theories, and in many cases, understandably so. And that's why our recommendations are about trying to be more open and more transparent and not allowing such things to happen. Because I think we can all agree that if there is a... Cons if you will suspend your judgment, those of you who believe in the 9-11... Uh, conspiracy theory or whatever, the 9-11 truth movement, whatever. Um, if, in actual fact, you are mistaken, then I think most of you would accept then that's actually quite a damaging belief to be holding and to be propagating, if in fact it is not the case. So, uh, George Monbiot, the, I'm sure many of you are fans of his, uh, he's, a, he's a very uh, investigative, uh, brave journalist, says the problem with 9-11 conspiracy theories in particular is that they distract people from the very many genuine conspiracies that in fact are going on and are based on far more credible information. And we should be trying to focus on those. And if I can take it back to something that this gentleman uh, said, uh, said earlier, which is that I, I, it links directly to that, which is, which is what I, I agree. I mean, conspiracies tend to um, 
in my view, uh, tend to flourish when government does lie and does cover things up. Uh, I don't <coughs> think that's necessarily saying that we're confusing cause and effect, because in the work that I've done with Muslim communities, and that's most of the work that I do is related to al-Qaeda terrorism, you find that um, massive disbelief uh, within communities that any attack was even perpetrated, that the CIA was the ones that were behind 9-11, that in fact their four lads in their, in their community weren't responsible for this, is actually quite damaging, and it is, because it means that people are far less likely to want to work with the police, want to talk to the police. There's a problem. And, um, and finally, I just uh, want to say that no one's actually contested the fundamental point of our paper, which is that within extremist groups, particularly terrorist groups, conspiracies for an obvious reason, and some of these conspiracies, if you look at them, are absolutely ridiculous, uh, are an important part of the ideology for the reasons Carl mentioned. It does drive a wedge between people. It does push people in a more radical direction. And uh, that's what we were trying to argue. The gentleman here. Yeah, uh, there are a couple of points I want to make there. Number one, about the um, uh, small group of people who are uh, isolated. So it's not just isolated people. You have the banks. You have a group think where a, a board thinks a certain way and there's no dissenting voices. This is very common. It's psychological. Yeah. There's nothing to do with conspiracy theories throughout all the time. Okay, great. Let me yeah. finish. Yeah. Point number two, the 9-11 truth movement. Truth, in other words, they're manipulating, they're saying, this is the truth, by the very same 9-11 truth movement. They're saying, that's the truth, when in fact there's a lot of things saying it can maybe not be true. But they're manipulating things just as much as conspiracy theories themselves, right? And the third thing is that you say that you're going to get people to be more open, to uh, um, uh, be more critical. I can tell you, whatever you do, however open the government is, however open it thinks, there will be still people who believe in the conspiracy theories. It doesn't matter what you do. And I believe that a lot of 9-11 people will continue to believe that despite any evidence. So how do you overcome that? Yeah, that's a very difficult question. And, and I agree. I think that there is a, if you like, a residual percentage given uh, the way society is at the moment, people that are going to believe in the irrespective of what evidence you put in front of them. And I actually think that is exactly what the 9-11 truth movement is at the moment. Um, but the, I agree with you about the group think. I mean, I, th I think in the report we say that it, uh, it's probably the best known example is Kennedy at the Bay of Pigs invasion. I mean, it was a classic case of group think, a small group of people, no dissenting voices, pushing themselves into this ridiculous position and an absurd policy. And it does happen everywhere, all the time. And I don't think it is confined to conspiracy theories at all, I think, but I think that it does say that it's always important to have dissenting voices in any discussion that you have. And that's why actually this is quite a good and I, and I am genuinely appreciative of the opportunity to come. Now, now the thing is, that, yeah, just yeah. want to, um, the, the thing is, some of these websites um, where, no, I mean, uh, J Jews were told to leave the building, so there were no Jews killed in the 9 11, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, that there, there was a, a Jewish conspiracy in order to bring America. No, I've read all these things, you look at them, and there's, there's an agenda behind them, there's an agenda that says, we must do something about <laughs> Zog or Jews or you know, Freemasons or whatever the hate figure is. And the prime example of that was Hitler. He wrote in his Mein Kampf about the Freemasons, about the uh, Jewish conspiracy and so on. And look what happened with that. that it's a very dangerous thing. And I think people who go into this, the, the initiate of the conspiracy, about the 9-11 truth in the Commons movement, uh, can be playing a very dangerous game. Can I, can I, can I chip in, sorry? Yeah, um, but Hitler was responsible for a false flag attack. But I don't think that's relevant to what we're talking well, about. Oh, well, well then, 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 nothing wrong with me. Can I, sorry, can I, can I, can I, 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 I'd like to respond to um, your, your question to do with, well, um, there are always going to be people believing in conspiracy theories, so why bother doing anything? Um, I think that's a very important question to ask. So thank you very much for asking it. Um, I, 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 I'd like to say that um, whilst conspiracy theories have been around for a long time and as far as I know there have been people that believed in them somehow. Um, if you look at today, um, there are some societies which have conspiracy theories much more than others. 
they tend to correlate with how open a society is and how um, and the distance between the decision making structures of government and the people themselves. So um, there are, for instance, uh, the, the, the rather undemocratic mentions, for instance, in the Middle East, like Saudi, um, so conspiracies there is hard to actually conventional fact truisms in many, in many ways. Um, my own personal opinion about one of the causes of conspiracy theories as a social wide phenomenon rather than on an individual level is that they're in some sense a kind of ideal, ideological reaction to disruption and inequality. So people react um, by being far removed or not being convinced of or acquainted with the ways in which government makes decisions um, by essentially constructing... For them, they feel as if there is a conspiracy against them. Like, that inequality to that, like, translates into the feeling of a conspiracy. Um, so we have to do... I mean, you know, I mean, Demos' agenda broadly being this redistribution of power to people from the powerful, um, like, is the best way in rebutting, on a social level, the prevalence of conspiracies, conspiracy theories. We have to attack the ways in which some people are very powerful in society and some people aren't very powerful. And, as I've just said, the ways in which the, 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 the powerless usually react to that sense of, the, of powerlessness by forming conspiracy theories around them. Now, I, I might say that's, again, that's a personal view of mine, um, and... That's fairly hypothetical, but I thought I'd share that with everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just before I start, seeing as uh, I've already been called an idiot, I'll just say I'm, 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 I'm head of um, <laughs> but, um, you know, my subject's physics. Um, you know, I, I may be broke, but I've got some values. And uh, the problem I have with the whole thing is that you guys have swallowed the cap. You know, we can't, it, there's something here that, that we, for me, I can't let go. And that is that when you look at 9-11 and you see buildings coming down at almost exactly the laws of physics forbid that. You know, you've known since you were 18 you run across a room and you bump into something, it slows you down. It's called the law of conservation of momentum. These buildings came down at almost exactly free fall speed with pancake collapses, floor and floor, that's collision, 87 or so collisions in the high towers and about 43 in the low ones. And these came down well, on, on the South Tower, the estimated time was actually less than a free fall speed, which is, you know, th th that doesn't particularly help. But the thing is, the speeds prove that these were demolitions. They prove it. It's a proven thing. Absolutely. Exactly. To me, it's, it's right. absolutely proven. And exactly. the fact that you, the fact that you want to talk about it, that you want to take the debate somewhere else, and that you, and, and the thing I would like to, like to point, out, point out is that you, this is exactly what happens with all our political parties and media and with think tanks is that uh, you share their agenda, whether you think you're independent or not, you're not independent. Because if you refuse to explain to me how those buildings came down, I cannot really... Well, can I explain to you? Yeah, I'm all professor. Okay, the, uh, no, no professor at all, no professor at all. Can we keep the civil, please? Uh, please, please, um, please. Anyone? No, it's up to these people to show what sort of alternative information the government could provide. It can't uh, be the alternative information. Uh, so, uh, well, I'm interested to know, I think, yeah, well, then we will yeah. get, then we will uh, get. Uh, sorry, the gentleman over no, here. Okay, no, sorry, specifically about this point, is there anything... Yeah, well, he's asked a question. Yeah. Well, I'm... Sorry, I've got a point about that and how he's comments as well. Sorry. Um, um, yes, yeah, basically, you're, you're talking about the alternative information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 as you define conspiracy theories, that's a very, very tenuous link. There's absolute, but just based on your own definition, there's no evidence that extremism and conspiracy theories go hand in hand. Um, the second theory, the second um, point about that, what that man made over there, <coughs> is obviously if there is something that possibly defies all known laws of physics, and there's questions to be asked then that's automatically put into the category of a conspiracy theory. So, therefore, you're no longer allowed to address questions about the laws of physics, for example. You know, and you can take um, that, you know, spread across several different conspiracy theories. Um, you know. So you can't just dismiss um, what is happening with regard to physics and what is supposed to happen according to theories and when those theories are not met by what happens in reality. Okay, I'm interested in some other comments on this 
on this point, and, uh, and then we will speak. Is that okay? Um, well, I'd rather you answer. Well, I'd rather well, listen. I'd rather. Well, we would like to hear. Oh, you see. No, no, okay. because, because I don't want to answer this question and have another. Unscannable 33.